and Nightbeat starts right now. They were trying to escape from the people who held them against their will. A witness says it all ended in chaos on San Antonio's south side. They ran like right by the street. What police say happened moments after the escape coming up. And an apartment complex dealing with more than just shootings. The pictures that reveal the trouble Leon Valley residents are living with and how a judge is now stepping in to try and make things right. Plus, a local teacher fired after confronting a middle school student. Tonight, that student now sharing what he was dealing with. But first. Shots fired, two people run down by a truck. San Antonio police think that it all happened after migrants were being held against their will. And we broke this story at the end of our 6 o'clock newscast. Tonight, a witness is sharing what she saw. This was on the city's south side near South Presa and Graff Road. The night team's John Paul Barajas has been following this story for us tonight. John Paul, police say one of those migrants may have actually been the one that opened fire in all this. Steve, Stephania, that's right. Investigators tell us that those four believed to be migrants were all men in the age range of 20 to 30, and they were being held here at the Berg's Mill Motel, where they were being held against their will. Now, they were able to escape as well as grabbing a gun from one of their captors. They explained they took off down South Presta running on foot. The suspects then chased them in a black pickup truck. That's when the four men tried to run in zigzags across the, tree, uh, the street to avoid being hit while also taking aim and fire at that truck. But the driver was still able to run over two of those people just up the road by a bar. There was a black Ford that ended up crossing Pressa to hit these young fellows. They just heard the gun swaps and immediately locked the doors and said, the police will handle it. That's the manager of Thirsty's Bar, where all this ended across the street. Police tell us one of the migrants hit by that truck is in critical condition, but the other is expected to be okay. As for the suspect in the black F-150, he is still on the loose. Police are still looking for him. This is still an active investigation. You saw the police lights going by us just a few moments ago. We do not know if that is related, but we'll try to bring you updates as soon as possible. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Let's hope they find that suspect. Thank you, John Paul. New tonight, a teacher facing child pornography charges. Mark Mallow now on administrative leave with the Judson Independent School District. In an affidavit, investigators say Mallow was a band teacher at Woodlake Hills Middle School. The district says families were notified of the arrest. The investigation remains open tonight. Another teacher off the job in a different district and for a different reason. Edgewood ISD firing a teacher who is heard telling a student, quote, the very fact that you exist annoys me, end quote. Tonight, the student shared what led up to that incident at E.T. Wren Middle School. 12-year-old Leonardo Ramirez says a friend had asked for a piece of paper. When he went to get it, Ramirez says that teacher accused him of talking and joking around. Ramirez says that teacher also hurled insults that weren't caught on camera. That teacher fired after video of part of that incident came to light. Ramirez's father says he still has faith in teachers, but believes this instructor made a bad decision. Just one place. It's been the site of several shootings, four in the last year and just one last night. And now we're learning the Vista del Rey apartment complex has another issue. Sewage spilling into some apartments. In other cases, people who live there say they haven't had water for weeks. The night team's Patty Santos explains the city of Leon Valley is now getting a judge involved. What are we going to do if like, they kick everybody out and shut this place down? And like, I'm in the same boat because like, this is my home. Freshly moved in, Brandon Miller says that there's health and safety issues inside and out the Vista del Rey apartments. There's just been a lot of crime activity. Like we've heard a couple gunshots. Uh, we've heard just like people yelling and fighting. There's been like fights out here. Leon Valley police say the calls for service are extensive. 
daily. And so are the calls for code violations. No hot water is the probably the number one complaint that we're getting from the residents that live at Vista Del Rey. They'll go weeks without any water, um, up to 10 days. Sewage leaks above units, rodent infestation, and mold. City manager Crystal Caldera says they are among 50 city code violations that have only gotten worse in the last year. Vista Del Rey's management company now faces a court order to fix the more urgent code violations by the end of September. Our number one priority is just to get them compliant so people have a habitable place to live. In an email, the management company says it's working to provide a, quote, safe and enjoyable living experience for residents, adding that it's spent over $1.5 million in renovations since April 2021. The city says it's keeping an eye on other apartment companies straddling the line on the health and safety of renters. We do have other aging complexes in our community um, that the city is paying attention and that we will be looking towards making sure everybody comes compliant um, with all of our codes. And the judge's order also is giving the management company another six months or so to make the other fixes necessary in order to be in compliance. And we checked online to see how much one of these units is being rented for. It starts off at about $800. The city also telling us about 900 people live in this complex. Steve Stefania. Patty, thank you. Tonight, more questions about the vandalism at a historic San Antonio home. Someone broke into the Uturi Edmonds home over the weekend. The 19th century home near Mission Concepcion serves as a museum. The Conservation Society of San Antonio says that whoever broke in was probably looking for valuables. Heads were torn, torn off dolls, multiple artifacts were broken, and a clock that belonged to the original homeowner is now missing. It's really the, the loss of the, the heritage of, of that clock that, uh, you know, she and her sister had invested so much in. They were very spiritual, religious people, and I, I think that was a very important piece. The Conservation Society says it's already fixed a door, but overall repairs are expected to cost a few thousand dollars. The ex-constable still in court. The fate of Michelle Barrientes Vela could be decided as soon as tomorrow. The public corruption trial finished day seven today. The state rested, however, not before defense attorney Nico LaHood gave a fiery cross-examination of Texas Ranger Bradley Freeman. LaHood attacked the state's use of a Precinct 2 clerk who resigned a day after law enforcement raided her workplace. You've made that assessment to trust Susan Tristan that you've known for 13 days. That's your testimony to this jury? We trusted that Susan would tell us if there was anything on the recording that we needed to know. The Ranger issued multiple grand jury subpoenas for security records from Rodriguez Park, but never specifically asked for cash logs. Attorneys for Barrientes Vela described the gathering of documents as deficient. Now for a look at the other big headlines in your night beat news flash. Parents have questions tonight about the separation of church and state after a pastor says San Antonio ISD agreed to rent him space at an elementary school to host services. The Lord owns a school. If he wants us to meet there, he's going to let us meet there. So you just heard a snippet of a podcast from Pastor Carl Young that was posted six months ago. Young says the plan was to start hosting gatherings on Sundays at Lamar Elementary next year. And then claims popped up that he wanted the school to depend on his church financially. The district says it's investigating that. Administrators at Lamar are going to meet with parents tomorrow at 5 p.m. Another step forward for those new COVID booster shots. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved them for emergency use authorization. But hold on, because something else needs to happen before you can actually get them in your arms. The CDC needs to give the OK. And tomorrow, an advisory panel for the CDC is going to discuss those boosters. And then the CDC director has to give final approval. Those new boosters would better target the new strains of Omicron. If it's approved, some people could get those shots after the Labor Day weekend. And a recall alert that's burned people who were brewing coffee. This recall is coming out of Ikea, so just take a closer look. It involves Ikea's Metallus Espresso Makers. The stainless steel safety valve that you see right there circled, it can burst. It's actually burned some people. So if you have it, take it back. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. 
We have a lot of weather to talk about, especially when it comes to water, which is a good thing. Very impressive rainfall totals this month. I'll show you how much rain has fallen and where on top of the current drought monitor. Some really impressive numbers there. Increasing rain chances ahead. I even modified very recently the weekend forecast. It will be impacting parts of the weekend. And then watching tropical development out in the Atlantic. I'll tell you where that is and what are the odds of development in just a bit. The schools just a few miles from the mass shooting in New Valley. Now a neighboring school district making more changes to security. As of now, I'm instructing our employees, we're not going to hide our desk to be executed. Sabinal ISD's safety plan differs from other schools. The integration of teachers and technology, how they did it, coming up. And in another district, teachers had to stop their lessons just as class was beginning. How a four-year-old student put an elementary school on lockdown and why police wanted to visit that student's home. It's next on the Night Beat. A scare at a school led to an arrest. Police put an elementary school on lockdown after a four-year-old student was found with a loaded gun. Happened this morning in Corpus Christi. Police called in more officers to help lock down that campus. Investigators say they secured the weapon and then went to the four-year-old's home. And that's where they found the student's father. Police arrested him for leaving the handgun accessible to that child. Now, the topic of guns in schools recently intensified after the shooting in Uvalde, as many of you know. Some parents have even been calling for gun reform. Well, today, Governor Greg Abbott pushed back on that. He says that raising the minimum age to buy AR-15 style assault rifles would be, quote, unconstitutional, unquote. Now, one law scholar disagrees with Abbott and says the issue is not yet settled. We have that complete article for you with all the details on KSET.com. The Robb Elementary School shooting has prompted schools across the state, though, to make serious security changes. Just over 20 miles east of Uvalde in Sabinaw, it is no different. The superintendent of Sabinaw ISD shows the night team's Lee Waldman they're taking the lessons learned from their neighbors to make this school year safer. Again, when you push that, it's sending a pre-recorded message to dispatch, and also there's a GPS responder in here, so they'll get told what the coordinates are to this. Intruder alarms alongside fire alarms. It's a sign of the times in Sabinaw. We're like the little brother or sister to Uvalde. Superintendent Richard Grill walked us through his school, pointing out the improved classroom doors, tempered glass, and numbers on windows to mark classrooms for law enforcement. If they're trying to determine which kids they need to get out of which rooms or which room the bad guy's in, they'll know which classroom this is. When you approach any Sabinal ISD school, you're going to have to go to one of these ring doorbell cameras first. Hello, can I help you? Hi, this is Lee Waldman with KSAT. I'm here to meet with Mr. Grill. Can I see your uh, press ID? So I'll show her my ID here. Okay, I'm aware of your appointment. You can come in. Grill says they learned a lot from the Robb Elementary tragedy. And it's kind of a morbid thing to do, but uh, nonetheless, my job is to keep everybody safe here. New this year, the district is offering their staff free license to carry classes. They can't have weapons in school like the Guardian program, but they can have them in their vehicles if something were to happen and implementing the Raptor alert system. All right. So this is a an emergency alert that we've just put in place uh, that sends out a notice to all employer uh, and all employees for right. emergencies. That alert you heard at the end sends a message to cell phones, computers and over that intercom. Also this year, law enforcement in the area is stepping up their presence on campuses and there's an undercover armed security guard that will also patrol the schools. Back to you. Signs of the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lee. Now he's a live look outside the downtown area right now. 80 degrees and everything looks clear right now. But, oh, hold on because we are getting better chances for rain, which is what we really want. Got our fingers crossed, Adam. Yeah, and I really think the next couple of days we're not going to see much on the radar screen. We'll still see something, but not a whole lot. The very highly isolated, just little pop up showers. I've already tweaked the weekend forecast a bit uh, just moments ago, and I've bumped Saturday up to 60%. Sunday's at 50%. So that means more widespread coverage, more numerous showers, 
downpours and of course a few thunderstorms, but nothing severe. Just more of what we've seen this tropical heavy rain. Tomorrow, Friday, 20%, but then again this weekend, those chances rise a lot. It doesn't mean it's going to rain all weekend. We'll just have those developing downpours periodically. Now, speaking of rainfall, I want to look at this. This is the drought monitor, which, by the way, will be updated tomorrow. So we're going to bring you that during the 9 a.m. show, GMSA at 9, and of course, I'll have it for you tomorrow evening. But I do anticipate big improvements. Just look at the rainfall we've had so far this month. Brackettville, over seven inches. Eagle Pass, over nine inches. These are not estimates. These are actual rain gauge measurements. Molten, just north of Shiner, over four inches. <laughs> Locally, not as much as outline areas, but generally speaking, about two inches, give or take, in and around Bear County and San Antonio. So not bad. All right, the Medina River at Pipe Creek actually started flowing again today. Stream flow this morning went from basically zero to 252 cubic feet per second. So due to recent rainfall, Medina River is flowing again. Don't think it's impacting Medina Lake, though. Medina Lake still at 8% full. It takes a lot of rain over this very small watershed. That's one of the problems with Medina Lake Reservoir has such a small watershed. You need a lot of water over that specific small area to really see that that reservoir rebound. However, We've been in a favorable trend, and I think it's going to get only more favorable, as I showed you into the upcoming weekend. Currently pretty quiet on the radar, just a few little showers out there, especially just moving through Gillespie County over the past couple of hours, and even Fredericksburg, near Blanco as well. So Canyon Lake earlier today, the eastern side of the lake near the dam, had a downpour. Now this evening, the western side of the lake just over the past hour had a brief little shower flare up, but that's it. And I generally dry the rest of the night. So the situation now, one reason why I dropped the rain chances a bit the next couple of days to 20%. So just a, a handful every afternoon is this upper disturbance that really provided some good lift the past few days continues to drift away from us. It's drifting westward toward the desert southwest, pulling most of the energy away from us as well. Of course, we're still tracking the tropics and our enhanced rain this weekend has nothing to do with the tropics. There's likely going to be some development, particularly from this system that's out in the Atlantic, just east of the Caribbean right now. 80% development there and then downgraded to 40% from this new wave that just came off of Africa. Right now, absolutely zero threat from any tropical activity. Actually, you look at the spaghetti plots from this one, even if or when it does develop into a tropical cyclone, it's likely to take that common arc northward toward, Berm toward Bermuda and away from even the east coast of the U.S. Temperatures, 93 today, the high temperature. Right now we're at 80. Sticky though, dew point is 71. 77 the temperature in Hondo, 74 in Kerrville. For the most part, we're in the 70s to low 80s. We'll start the day tomorrow in the mid 70s. By the afternoon, we get into the low to mid 90s. About 95 New Braunfels, 93 Divine, 94 downtown and even at the airport. That 20% chance of an afternoon shower, but up to 30% by tomorrow night. And then this holiday weekend, upper 80s with those better rain chances. And by the way, that Saturday should say 60%. All right, thank you. All right, before the UTSA Roadrunners played there, it was dome sweet dome for the Spurs. <laughs> it sure was, right? So now they're both going to play there in one former fashion for the Spurs. It's their 50th anniversary celebration. We'll give you a little hint. Cheaper tickets. <laughs> and also when we come back, we're saluting Yavaldi's home opener. Coming up. on sale tomorrow for the Spurs' big 50th anniversary celebration game in the Alamo Dome, January the 13th against the Golden State Warriors. And he gets you ready for the big event. Former Spurs star Sean Elliott made a trip down to the Dome today, where he made a name for himself. His Memorial Day miracle is what legends are made of against the Portland Trail Blazers, a game-winning three-pointer delivered that would have never counted had it not been the fact Sean raised his heels off the floor to stay in bounds. It would help propel the Spurs to the 1999 NBA Finals, where the Spurs won their first ever NBA championship. And now we are coming back for one game, but not like the old style using half of the dome. This is the final four style with the entire dome available. Coming back for a Spurs game is going to be really exciting this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think you guys know already 65,000 people are is our goal. And, you know, before when the dome was set up, we had the curtain. We could get 30 and change in here. 
And that was always loud, so I can't imagine 65,000 plus. It's going to be amazing. I feel like I've been in that dome here for the last few days for most of my life. Tomorrow, a limited amount of community tickets will be sold, 2500 at just $10 each, and you are limited to five in the Alamo Dome box office. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. There are now two former San Antonio high school football players in the Dallas Cowboys roster. That's after Dennis Houston made the 53-man roster. The Warren High School product was a standout at training camp as an undrafted free agent, and not just for his route running skills, but also for being physical. It impressed our quarterback, Dak Prescott. Another surprise is that the Cowboys did not place Michael Gallup on the pup list, meaning they believe he'll be able to return before the fourth game of the season. He's getting close, uh, you know. He's he's hit every target, you know. Just, you know, his re his rehab's going very smooth. So we're just uh, just staying on the plan. And um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't have anything to, you know. He's he's still working with with Britt and the rehab group. The Cowboys will kick off their season one week from this Sunday night at 7.15 p.m. against Tampa Bay. Here's a look at the practice squad additions. Both quarterbacks came back. So did Malik Jefferson linebacker Isaac Alacorn, also a guard and wide receiver Brandon Smith. After cutting quarterback Jeff Driscoll on Tuesday, the Texans brought him back today as part of their practice squad. And they also brought back veteran running back Marlon Mack. Here are some other notables that have returned, including Jordan Atkins and Kevin Pierre-Louis. The UTSA Roadrunners have announced that seats in the upper level of the Alamo Dome for this Saturday's season opener against number 24 Houston are now on sale for just $10 plus online fees through this Friday. On Saturday, that price will jump up to $15. And prior to kickoff, the Roadrunners' first ever Conference USA Championship better will be unveiled. Prior to kickoff of the 2022 season, the Roadrunners were asked if this is the toughest team they have faced. They jump out on paper, you know, statistically wise, they're nationally ranked. Um, it'll be a good defense. Um, everything our coaches have said is that this will be one of the best defenses we play. So um, we're going to go out there and compete and we'll see. They stack up to the teams that I've played in my short time here. Um, as long as I feel like I'm going to ride behind my guys, as long as we stick to the brand, the brand shows up physically tough, dominate, we'll, we'll be just fine. And kick off in the Alamo Dome on Saturday is set for 2.30. Before UTSA kicks off in the Dome on Saturday, the Valero Alamo Bowl helped kick off the college football season today with their annual pigskin luncheon. And the guest today, Sam Ocho, the former UT defensive end who played on the horns when they faced Alabama in the national championship game. He gave us his opinions, including who he believes might be suiting up in the 30th anniversary of the Valero Alamo Bowl on December the 29th. This game is consistently a, a, a game that you always see good teams and good ball being played. Teams like Oregon, right? Maybe this year, a team like USC might be in it. I think for the first time in the Valero Alamo Bowl. A team like USC might be in there. Uh, Oklahoma's consistently winning. Texas may get in. And so we've seen a lot of people opt out of bowl games, but this seems like one of those games that people don't want to opt out of. All right, Sam is also on his way to Austin where he'll help call the Horn season open against, on Saturday, I should say, against Louisiana Monroe. Streaming first home game from Uvalde next. Central Sports was in Carrizo Springs for the Valley Coyote season opener last Friday in which they won 21-13. Now KSAT will be live streaming on all of our platforms the Valley home opener at the Honey Bowl this Friday night starting at 6.30 p.m. with a pregame show. We will carry the entire game including halftime with Eagle Pass win. I want to thank both head coaches uh, Wade Miller of Uvalde and also uh, Eric Villasenor of uh, Eagle Pass win for being very patient with me over the last few days as we gather information to do the broadcast and I know they've had had their own challenges here, yeah. including all the weather they've had in that area. In fact, today the field was so flooded in Uvalde, they had to practice in the gym. And also coming up is the big celebration of their 1972 state championship, of which Jerry Comalander, the former Churchill coach and Northeast athletic director, is part of that because he was an assistant coach on that team. Yeah, a lot going on in Uvalde. On yeah, we're really looking forward to doing this. Too. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Got a question for you. Who needs gas? Well, let me tell you this. Tomorrow afternoon, that is the time for you to fill up because Circle K is offering 40 cents off per gallon. There are more than two dozen participating stores around San Antonio and the surrounding areas, and this deal is only good tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m. I'm glad you asked who needs it instead of who has it. <laughs> that does it for the night. Then we have an answer. <laughs> Don't forget, good, good morning, night. San Antonio starts at